सी आई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सिक्स इन टाइटल आर पास वन पेज नंबर फोर्टी सिक्स चैप्टर नंबर फाइव टाइटल्ड किंगडम्स किंग्स एंड एन अर्ली रिपब्लिक इलेक्शन डे शंकरन वोक अप टू सी हिज ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स ऑल रेडी to go and vote they wanted to be the first to reach the polling booth why shankaran wanted to know were they so excited somewhat impatiently his grandfather explained we can choose our own rulers today how some men became rulers choosing leaders or rulers by voting is something that has become common during the last 50 years or so how did men become rulers in the past some of the rajas we read about in chapter 4 were probably chosen by the jana the people but around 3000 years ago we find some changes taking place in the ways in which rajas were chosen some men now become recognized as rajas by performing very big sacrifices the ashwamedha or horse sacrifice was one such ritual a horse was let loose to wander freely and it was guarded by the rajas men if the horse wandered into the kingdoms of other rajas and they stopped it they had to fight if they allowed the horse to pass it meant that they accepted that the raja who wanted to perform the sacrifice was stronger than them these rajas were then invited to the sacrifice which was performed by specially trained priests who were rewarded with gifts the raja who organized the sacrifice was recognized as being very powerful and all those who came brought gifts for him the raja was a central figure in these rituals he often had a special seat a throne or a tiger skin his charioteer who was his companion in the battlefield and witnessed his exploits chanted tales of his glory page number 47 his relatives especially his wives and sons had to perform a variety of minor rituals the other rajas were simply spectators who had to sit and watch the performance of the sacrifice priests performed the rituals including the sprinkling of sacred water on the king the ordinary people the vish or vaishya also brought gifts however some people such as those who were regarded as shudras by the priests were excluded from many rituals make a list of all those who would be present at the sacrifice which are the categories that are described in terms of their occupation varnas we have many books that were composed in north india especially in the areas drained by the ganga and the yamuna during this period these books are often called later vedic because they were composed after the rigveda about which you learnt in chapter 4 these include the samaveda yajurveda and atharvaveda as well as other books these were composed by priests and described how rituals were to be performed 
they also contained rules about society. There were several different groups in society at this time. Priests and warriors, farmers, herders, traders, craft persons, laborers, fishing folk and forest people. Some priests and warriors were rich, as were some farmers and traders. Others, including many herders, craft persons, laborers, fishing folk and hunters and gatherers, were poor. The priests divided people into four groups called Varnas. According to them, each Varna had a different set of functions. The first Varna was that of the Brahmin. Brahmins were expected to study and teach the Vedas, perform sacrifices and receive gifts. In the second place were the rulers, also known as Kshatriyas. They were expected to fight battles and protect people. Third were the Vish or the Vashyas. They were expected to be farmers, herders and traders. Both the Kshatriyas and the Vashyas could perform sacrifices. Page number 48 Last were the Shudras who had to serve the other three groups and could not perform any rituals. Often, women were also grouped with the Shudras. Both women and Shudras were not allowed to study the Vedas. The priests also said that these groups were decided on the basis of birth. For example, if one's father and mother were Brahmins, one would automatically become a Brahmin and so on. Later, they classified some people as untouchable. These included some craftspersons, hunters and gatherers, as well as people who helped perform burials and cremations. The priests said that contact with these groups was polluting. Many people did not accept the system of Varna laid down by the Brahmins. Some kings thought they were superior to the priests. Others felt that birth could not be a basis for deciding which Varna people belonged to. Besides, some people felt that there should be no differences amongst people based on occupation. Others felt that everybody should be able to perform rituals and others condemned the practice of untouchability. Also, there were many areas in the subcontinent such as the Northeast where social and economic differences were not very sharp and where the influence of the priests was limited. Why did people oppose the system of Varnas? Janpadas The Rajas who performed these big sacrifices were now recognized as being Rajas of Janpadas rather than Janas. The word Janpada literally means the land where the Jana set its foot and settled down. Some important Janpadas are shown on map 4, page 49. Archaeologists have excavated a number of settlements in these Janpadas, such as Purana Khila in Delhi, Hastinapur near Meerut, and Ataranji Kheda near Eta. The last two are in 
Uttar Pradesh. They found that people lived in huts and kept cattle as well as other animals. They also grew a variety of crops, rice, wheat, barley, pulses, sugarcane, sesame and mustard. Is there a crop in this list that was not mentioned in chapter 3? A picture is shown in the left bottom of page number 48. It shows painted grey ware. Plates and bowls are the most common vessels made out of painted grey ware. These are extremely fine to touch with a nice smooth surface. Perhaps these were used on special occasions for important people and to serve special food. Page number 49 They made earthen pots. Some of these were grey in colour. Others were red. One special type of pottery found at these sites is known as painted grey ware. As is obvious from the name, these grey pots had painted designs, usually simple lines and geometric patterns. Maha Janpadas About 2,500 years ago, some Janpadas became more important than others and were known as Maha Janpadas. Some of these are shown on map 4. Most Maha Janpadas had a capital city. Many of these were fortified. This means that huge walls of wood, brick or stone were built around them. On this page, map number 4 is shown with the title Important Janpadas, Maha Janpadas and Cities. The important Janpadas, Maha Janpadas and Cities are Gandhar, Takshashila, Kuru, Hastinapur, Panchal, Kausal, Kaushambi, Vaishali, Magadh, Rajgrihi, Vajji, Ang, Avanti, Ujjain, Page number 50 Forts were probably built because people were afraid of attacks from other kings and needed protection. It is also likely that some rulers wanted to show how rich and powerful they were by building really large, tall and impressive walls around their cities. Also, in this way, the land and the people living inside the fortified area could be controlled more easily by the king. Building such huge walls required a great deal of planning. Thousands, if not lakhs of bricks or stones, had to be prepared. This in turn meant enormous labor, provided possibly by thousands of men, women and children. And resources had to be found for all of this. On this page, a picture is shown. It shows the fortification wall at Koshambi. This is a picture of remains of a wall made of brick found near the present-day Allahabad, Uttar Pradesh. A part of it was probably built about 2,500 years ago. Page number 51 The new Rajas now began maintaining armies. Soldiers were paid regular salaries and maintained by the king throughout the year. 
some payments were probably made using punch-marked coins. See the illustration on page number 84. You will read more about these coins in chapter number 8. List two ways in which the Rajas of the Mahajanpadas were different from those mentioned in the Rig Veda. Taxes As the rulers of the Mahajanpadas were a. Building huge forts b. Maintaining big armies they needed more resources and they needed officials to collect these. So, instead of depending on occasional gifts brought by people, as in the case of the Raja of the Janpadas, they started collecting regular taxes. Taxes on crops were the most important. This was because most people were farmers. Usually, the tax was fixed at one-sixth of what was produced. This was known as bhaga or a share. There were taxes on craftspersons as well. These could have been in the form of labor. For example, a weaver or a smith may have had to work for a day every month for the king. Herders were also expected to pay taxes in the form of animals and animal produce. There were also taxes on goods that were brought and sold through trade. And hunters and gatherers also had to provide forest produce to the Raja. What do you think would have been provided by hunters and gatherers. Page number 52 Changes in Agriculture There were two major changes in agriculture around this time. One was the growing use of iron plough shares. This meant that heavy, clayey soil could be turned over better than with a wooden plough share so that more grain could be produced. Second, people began transplanting paddy. This meant that instead of scattering seed on the ground from which plants would sprout, saplings were grown and then planted in the fields. This led to increased production as many more plants survived. However, it was back-breaking work, generally slave men and women, dasas and dasis, and landless agricultural labourers, kamakaras, had to do this work. Can you think why kings would encourage these changes? A closer look. A. Magadha Find Magadha on map 4, page 49. Magadha became the most important Mahajanpada in about 200 years. Many rivers such as the Ganga and Son flowed through Magadha. This was important for A. Transport B. Water supplies C. Making the land Fertile. Parts of Magadha were forested. Elephants which lived in the forest could be captured and trained for the army. Forests also provided wood for building houses, carts and chariots. Besides, there were iron ore mines in the region that could be tapped to make strong tools and weapons. Magadha had two very powerful rulers, Bimbisara and Ajatasattu, who used all possible means to conquer other Janpadas. Mahapadmananda was another important ruler. He 
he extended his control up to the northwest part of the subcontinent. Raja Griha, present-day Rajgir in Bihar, was the capital of Magadha for several years. Page number 53 Later, the capital was shifted to Partaliputra, present-day Patna, more than 2,300 years ago, a ruler named Alexander, who lived in Macedonia in Europe, wanted to become a world conqueror. Of course, he didn't conquer the world, but did conquer parts of Egypt and West Asia and came to the Indian subcontinent reaching up to the banks of the Bias. When he wanted to march further eastwards, his soldiers refused. They were scared, as they had heard that the rulers of India had vast armies of foot soldiers, chariots and elephants. In what ways were these armies different from those described in the Rig Veda? A closer look, B. Vajji. While Magadha became a powerful kingdom, Vajji, with its capital at Vaishali, Bihar, was under a different form of government, known as Gana or Sangha. In a Gana or a Sangha, there were not one, but many rulers. Sometimes, even when thousands of men ruled together, each one was known as a Raja. These Rajas performed rituals together. They also met in assemblies and decided what had to be done and how through discussion and debate. For example, if they were attacked by an enemy, they met to discuss what should be done to meet the threat. However, women, dasas and kamakaras could not participate in these assemblies. Both the Buddha and Mahavira, about whom you will read in chapter 6, belonged to ganas or sanghas. Some of the most vivid descriptions of life in the Sanghas can be found in Buddhist books. Gana is used for a group that has many members. Sangha means organization or association. Page number 54 This is an account of the Vajjis from the Digha Nikaya, a famous Buddhist book, which contains some of the speeches of the Buddha. These were written down about 2,300 years ago. Ajata Sattu and the Vajjis Ajata Sattu wanted to attack the Vajjis. He sent his minister named Vasakara to the Buddha to get his advice on the matter. The Buddha asked, whether the Vajjis met frequently in full assemblies. When he heard that they did, he replied that the Vajjis would continue to prosper as long as they held full and frequent public assemblies. They met and acted together. They followed established rules. They respected, supported and listened to elders. Vajji women were not held by force or captured. Chaityas, local shrines, were maintained in both towns and villages. Wise saints who followed different beliefs were respected and allowed to enter and leave the country freely. In what ways was the Vajji Sangha different from the other Mahajanpadas. 
try and list at least three differences. Rajas of powerful kingdoms tried to conquer the Sanghas. Nevertheless, these lasted for a very long time, till about 1,500 years ago, when the last of the Ganas or Sanghas were conquered by the Gupta rulers, about whom you will read in Chapter 10. Key Words Raja Ashwamedha Varna Janpada Mahajanpada Fortification Army Tax Transplantation Gana or Sangha Democracy Page number 55 Elsewhere Find Greece and Athens in your atlas. Around 2,500 years ago, the people of Athens set up a form of government, which was called a democracy, which lasted for about 200 years. All free men over the age of 30 were recognized as full citizens. There was an assembly that met at least 40 times a year to decide on important matters. All citizens could attend these meetings. Appointments for many positions were made through lottery. All those who wanted to be chosen gave their names and then some were selected through lottery. Citizens were expected to serve in the army and the navy. However, women were not considered citizens. Also, many foreigners who lived and worked in Athens as merchants and craftspersons did not have rights as citizens. Besides, there were several thousand slaves in Athens who worked in mines, fields, Households and workshops. They too were not treated as citizens. Do you think this was a true democracy? Imagine you are peeping through a crack in the walls of the assembly of Vaishali, where a meeting is in progress to discuss ways to deal with an attack by the king of Magadha. Describe what you might hear. Let's recall. 1. State whether true or false. A. Rajas who led the Ashwamedha horse pass through their lands were invited to the sacrifice. B. Charioteer sprinkled sacred water on the king. C. Archaeologists have found palaces in the settlements of the Janpadas. D. Pots to store grain were made out of painted grey ware. E. Many cities in Mahajanpadas were fortified. Page number 56. 2. Fill in the chart given below with the terms hunter-gatherers, farmers, traders, craftspersons, herders, those who paid taxes. The Raja of the Mahajanpada. 3. Who were the groups who could not participate in the assemblies of the Ganas? Let's discuss. 4. Why did the Rajas of Mahajanpadas build forts? 5. In what ways are present-day elections different from the ways in which rulers were chosen in Janpadas? Let's do. 6. Were there any Janpadas in your state? If yes, name them. If not, 
name the Janpadas that would have been the closest to your state and mention whether they were to the east, west, north or south. 7. Find out whether any of the groups mentioned in answer 2 pay taxes today. 8. Find out whether the groups mentioned in answer 3 have voting rights at present. Some important dates. New kinds of Rajas about 3000 years ago. Maha Janpadas about 2500 years ago. Alexander's invasion. Composition of the Digha Nikaya about 2300 years ago. End of the Ganas or Sanghas about 1,500 years ago. The chapter 5 ends here. Narrator Babla Kochar Producer Vimlesh Chaudhary Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India